We don't want to buy no line, no, no nothing. Mr. Dragore, please. Oh, him. No sound, please. After two years, I find you. I want the eternal light. You found me too late. It's no longer mine. I can kill with this from the end of the room. No lies, please. You cannot kill in England, Mahmoud. They, they get down Madras here and hang them. I have not come alone. If I hang, there are others. The eternal light goes back to the tomb from which you stole it. But I tell you, I have not got it. Please, I am not a child. I... I sold it. To whom did you sell it? To Professor Morland. That robber of the dead. Has he sold it? He did not buy to sell. What then? Like you, Mahmoud. She believes. Believes? He believes that the eternal light will open for him the gates of paradise? Even so, he gave the best part of his fortune for it. And very soon he will know whether or not he was right. What do you mean? Professor Morland is dying. Then you think it will be buried with him? I'm sure of it. We have only got to wait until he is dead. Anubis. Open out of the way. Good evening. I happen to be staying in the neighborhood, and hearing of your master's illness, I took the liberty of calling. How is he tonight? He'll never see the morning. He hasn't asked for anyone of my cloth. Nor will he. He's set in his ways, and they're the ways of the heathen. I know he won't see the rector, but though I'm a comparative stranger, I don't like to leave a man to die like that. He'll die in his own fashion, as he has lived. Still, sometimes at the end. Not with him. He's stubborn and unbending and will be so at the throne itself. Well, I suppose I can be of no use then. No manner of use. Good night. I'm asking for you. Where can I find Mr. Brown? Who is it? Come in or go out. have to go up soon if you want to see him again. Curious house, this. Curious owner. Yes, but I suppose a great Egyptologist can't be expected to be like other people. Well, he'll be like a great many other people soon. That's not a very sympathetic thing to say. 
Well, I'm not a sympathetic man. Want a drink? That's, uh, across the hall, isn't it? I dare say. Thanks. Seventy-five thousand, September twenty-second, nineteen thirty-one. I'm here. Is the door shut? It is. No listeners? None. The curtains? They are drawn. Come nearer. This man, Brockman. Watch, Brockman. You were always suspicious. Have you ever trusted a living soul? Only fools. I trust you. Better to trust in the spirit than in the flesh. I put my trust in my own. Now, when I am dead, my funeral, you will bury me at dusk in the clothes I told you. You will place the figure of Anubis at the west of the inner chamber. I will. And on the night of the full moon, at the first hour, I will make my offering of the eternal light to our new opener of the ways. If I have done well in his sight, those fingers will close over the jewel. And he will open to me the gates of immortality. The hand of a heathen image will now come to life. Ah, the bandage. The bandage. Look. This is the eternal light. It was rest in my hand. A man will know find peace who robs his heirs. 
bandage my hand. The eternal light must lie with me in the tomb. You're afraid of me. I'm afraid for you. If this should leave me, then you'll have reason to fear. For when the full moon strikes the door of my tomb, I will come back. You hear? I will come back to kill. Bandage my hand. All over. Make out a certificate. Heart failure. What was the idea of bandaging his hand like that? I cannot say. He had many a queer fancy. I'll be round in the morning to sign the certificate. I'll no be leaving my master's side till his body is laid to rest. Where are you going? To feed the lamp that is to burn inside.
Wait. You're leaving the key inside. Aye. That was another of his queer fancies. When your master died, Lang, I believe him to have been possessed of a jewel of great value. Do you know anything about it? Nothing. I advise you to be very careful, Lang. I have a careful nature. You may be putting yourself perilously near dishonesty. I've seen men nearer. You may regret this, Lang. I want you to stay here and watch that man with a club foot. I'm not a detective, Mr. Broughton. One more word from you, Davis, and you're out of work. I have reason to believe that he has stolen a valuable piece of property. He may make an effort to get rid of it. Watch him and telephone me at my office if he leaves the house. Very good, sir.
From Rapson. Ten shillings if you'll drive me to Yaxford Station in time to catch the five o'clock train. I'll oblige you, Governor. I was going straight back as it was. It's a very old carpet, Mr. Morland. I should be glad if you will not kick it to pieces. I'm sorry. When I'm angry, I do kick. Be good enough to explain that. Yes, I intend to. By your own statement, Miss Holland and I are the sole heirs of Professor Morland. We were informed neither of his death nor of his funeral. Your uncle died and was buried in a certain way according to his wishes, which need I go on. Almost his last words were a threat to return from the dead. In my opinion, he was mad. Well, that may be so. But Miss Holland and I should have been consulted. But I understood that you and Miss Holland were not on speaking terms. Well, what of that? You expect quiet at a funeral, don't you? Yes, I also expect it in my office. I'm very sorry, but after all, this means a good deal to both of us. Our uncle was worth about 4,000 a year. Well, he isn't now. What do you mean by that? He spent a good deal, you know. It may surprise you to know that some time ago he drew a check for 75,000 pounds. What for? I don't know. You don't know? You were in charge of all his affairs and you don't know? That's what I said. And I advise you to look after the tone of your voice. I'm not at all sure. I haven't much more important things to look after than the tone of my voice. I don't follow you. I'm going to run down to Owlsvale House tomorrow morning. Yes, well, I... I don't think you realize the... conditions that you'll find there. No. That's why I propose to go. You won't like it. You'll be most uncomfortable. You don't advise me to go? I think you'll be making a very big mistake. Then I'll go. Oh, by the way, does Miss Harlan know anything about this will business? No doubt she will have received a letter from me by now. Do you know Miss Harlan? No. I propose to give myself the pleasure of calling upon her this evening. Hello. Oh, it's you, Davis. Wait a minute. I have a visitor here, but I think he's just going. Thank you very much. If you're going to see Miss Harlan tonight, I shall be there myself. No doubt you will succeed in making a painful interview intolerable. Good afternoon. Your manner must help your practice a great deal. Now, Davis. Can you direct me to Blandford Street, please? Follow the tram lines, close on a mile, and then turn right at the church. I'm obliged to you. Out of that fog. My dear, a most exciting thing has happened. Oh! Oh, don't let it happen again. No, not that. That's a chestnut. <sighs> it's this. It looks like a solicitor's letter. Mm. Just been delivered by hand. Oh, dear. What haven't we paid? I wonder if I'm going to get a shock or not. Oh! Oh, Caney, that is a silly game. After all we've said about Uncle Henry, what do you think he's done? Something nice at last? He's dead. My dear, I'm sorry. And his solicitor wants to see me. My dear, I'm glad. He was awfully rich, wasn't he? <gasps> he may have left you a fortune. If he has, I'll buy you a private cinema. Oh, I say, when did this letter come? A few minutes ago, why? He asked me to 
telephone him if I could see him here at six. You don't want to miss the chance of a fortune for the sake of tuppence. You better run out and do it now. You're right. Miss Harlan. Yes. Lord, it's Betty Harlan. Rafe Morland. You would go and get yourself into some kind of mix-up. You would arrive when it's all over. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm going home. Wait a minute. I was on my way to see you, strictly on business. You wouldn't be allowed in for any other reason. That's good. Get out as quickly as possible. Broughton, it's my cousin, Rafe Morland. Dear Mr. Morland, we're delighted to see you. Wrong again. We don't like him very much. Oh, don't we? I didn't realize. Well, our two families are not on speaking terms. Oh, dear. As far as I can make out, it was started by my late uncle as a Christmas joke. Uh, won't you sit down? Thank you. But now he's dead. The trouble's all over. I'm not sure it hasn't just begun. Where's Mr. Broughton? Oh, he won't come because I didn't telephone. I oh. nearly got throttled instead. Betty! There was a man with a limp. He pushed a note into my hand. I just put it in my bag when somebody snatched the whole affair. What was in it? 
There's something of value at Owl's Vale. Others are after it, so come. And Broughton was doing everything he knew to keep me away from there. There's a fox in the cover somewhere. Goodbye. Oh, why goodbye? I'm going down there right away. I'll let you know what happens. You're wrong. I'll let myself know. If you go, I go too. You can't do that. Alone in a house with a man you're not even on speaking terms with? Oh, don't be so absurd. It's not as if I even liked him. Oh, if another woman was going, perhaps. I suppose that means you want to come too. Well, obviously, it's my duty. And suppose I object? I'm not so broke I can't hire a car. Oh, all right, you win, but for goodness sake, hurry. I'll have to walk. You might do worse. There's a grand moon. It's full. See if there's a name on this gate. No, there's nothing to show. This is the place. But there aren't any other places, and I'm frozen. Well, it's no use going to the wrong place. Wait a minute, here's someone on a bike. Hi there, Cocky. Wait a minute. Oh, hello. I'm awfully sorry. I didn't see you were a parson. Oh, that's all right. Any trouble? Oh, no, no. We just want to get to Owlsvale House. Well, this is it. As a matter of fact, I'm calling there myself. Oh, did you know my uncle, Professor Morland? Oh, slightly. I so I want to introduce myself. My name's Hartley, Nigel Hartley. I'm down at Raverley, the vicar's ill. How do you do? I'm Rafe Morland. This is Miss Harlan. We're the heirs of Couldn't the old... could we have the rest of the introduction indoors? Yes, yes, of course. You must be cold. All right, straight down this drive. You go along, I'll follow. All right. I'll be all right here. I'll show you the way.
What a horrible house. I wish I was back home in bed. I can hear someone coming. Ah. Well, don't stand about. Come inside. We're going to the library. I may be old-fashioned, but I feel awkward when I'm not introduced to people. I'm sorry, I forgot you didn't know your clients by sight. This is Miss Harlan. How do you do? I was expecting a telephone message from you. Oh, I was on my way to call you up when the most extraordinary thing happened. And this is Miss Caney. How do you do? You're a surprise, Broughton. I have a great deal of business to clear up down here. This house has needed a woman for about 25 years. <gasps> oh, no, I'm blinded myself. You haven't wasted much time in getting here, Mr. Morland. No, just a little too much, perhaps. Whatever do you mean? Really, you're the rudest man alive. Oh, pretty pussy. How horrible. It's stuffed. I dare say you know your own business best, but why you should want to bring a parson? A pure accident. We met at the gates. So and... naturally, you brought him in. Broughton, I can stand a certain amount, but no more. Ah, oh, come, come, don't let's make a battle of it. You stay here in the car. No. I shall be among the trees, watching. You may say I have no right to express this opinion, but to my mind it's a scandalous and disgraceful burial which may have disastrous consequences. It would be very disastrous if it came back, wouldn't it? I quite see Mr. Hartley's point. Yes, you make friends quickly, don't you? And enemies quicker. Need we have these childish squabbles? We all know the dead men don't come back. Oh, I wish I was back home in bed. Hadn't somebody better answer that? Certainly. It's your house. Very well. I'm sorry to disturb you, but I was an intimate friend of Professor Mollen. Well, you'd better come in. We seem to be giving a party. Oh. Well, thank you. My name is Aga Ben Dragore. An Egyptian. An Arab. I don't remember having heard your name. I did not flatter myself that you would. But I knew Professor Morland some years ago in Egypt. I heard of his death and of his burial in my own faith. And I hoped as I'm leaving England tomorrow, that I might be allowed to visit his tomb. I must protest against anything of the sort. Why shouldn't the poor man look at his friend's tomb? I don't mind him going. 
I can't believe that you'd willingly encourage paganism. The Egyptians were not pagan, sir. As no doubt you know, Miss... Uh... Kaylee, I think you're all being very unkind to Mr. Dragore. I don't think you people realize quite how far Morland's queer ideas took him. He even believed that after his death at a certain hour, the image of Anubis would come to life in his tomb and receive his soul. It's horrible. Well, I can't see that it matters. After all, if that sort of mumbo-jumbo gave him any comfort, it I'd... It matters a great deal. If my suggestion is likely to hurt anyone's feelings, please forget it. Oh, I think that's very sweet of you, Mr. Dragore. Oh, your sympathy is more than charming. <laughs> Well, what about a cup of coffee after your cold drive? I dare say we should find some in the kitchen. May I offer my services as pantry man? Uh, quite sweet of you. Come, Mr. Dragore. For sheer speed. She'll not let him out of her sight for a moment now. Perhaps that's just as well. Come along, Betty. How about making a fire in the library? Yes. I'm sorry there should be this sort of atmosphere. After all, we're only ships that pass in the night. Hmm. Do you want a drink or will you pass now? Uh, oh, well, thank you very much. There you are. Oh, if you build it that way, there won't be any draught. Well, it'll be the only place in this house where there isn't one, then. Oh, don't you think you carry those snappy retorts a trifle too far? Since we met, I can't remember you saying a kind word to anyone. Perhaps you're right. I'm sorry. Six cups. That's just, just far too many, eh? Tell me about Egypt. Have you ever seen a sheik? I am one. What? Oh, thank you. Then how should I address you? Oh, I'm cutting sandwiches for a sheik. I don't feel quite well. Oh, don't be alarmed. We're not quite as uncivilized as people think. Oh, don't say that. Do you ride a white stallion? Sometimes. Oh, down the path of the moon. The noble animal plunging and frothing up the nostrils till it founders at your feet, faithful unto death. Well, not very often. You see, it's rather too expensive. Well, I know it's not your fault. We were taught to hate one another, but... Good Lord, you don't think I hate you, do you? Well, I can't somehow feel I'm your dearest friend. You never did have a great deal of sense, did you? Oh, well, that's nice. Rafe, I have a woman's intuition that you and I are up against things. Yes, I'm pretty sure we are. Well, then, let's cut the quarrelling. Shoulder to shoulder, eh? All right? Partners. Partners. Ah. Oh, what a wonderful night. It's a full moon. Scared of a dead man in his tomb? Shame on yourself. Are you a child that your knee should rattle at the talk of a madman? Look your enemy in the face. It's the fear the big door has got you and will hold you fast till you stare it down.
Do dead men walk? I'm no thinking a dead man will cross my path tonight. Now I will show you how we make coffee in the desert, underneath the stars. But you don't make it yourself, do you? No, of course not. A Circassian slave, lovely as sin, cooks it for us, kneeling. And if it is not to our liking... I know. She's stripped to the waist and lashed for miles across the Sahara. Where she is finally eaten by locusts, and rightly. Now, take this canister and do exactly as I tell you. And if I fail? The Yorkshire Moors are just behind us. Now, six spoonfuls. One. <gasps> Two. Three. Four. Five. <laughs> the end of you. Get your arms away from me. What's the matter with you? Are you mad, eh? No. Terror. Stark terror. Oh, then I've caught it. You stay here. I'll look after him. If you must look after somebody, why look further? Eh? Come on, then. Rafe, that limp 
it. I'd swear to it anywhere. Did you give a note to this Gather up your things and get out of here. The master, I've seen him. You... <coughs> Who scream? I did. That's the last time I'll ever try to make coffee in a strange house. That man with a limp. Who was he? Lang. Your uncle's servant. Well, he seemed mad to me. Yes, and probably dangerous. You others had better go into the library. I'll have a word with him. Yes, come along. Mr. Broughton understands the men. It would do no harm to warn my man to stand by. Your man? Is he a chic too? No, no, he's his chauffeur. He's outside now with my car. Oh, you're not leaving us, are you? My dear lady. Not a very courageous person, our foreign friend. You think he's run away? Absurd. I'd like to see you riding your bicycle with a Circassian slave, lovely as sin, across the handlebars. What on earth are you talking about? Now listen, good people. Good people? Don't you think perhaps we're allowing this thing to get on our nerves? Don't you think perhaps if we took a grip on our self-control... Now listen, good parson. This is our show and our nerves are probably just as good as the next man's. So keep that sort of talk for your pulpit. Oh, well, of course, I have no wish to interfere where I'm not wanted. Then don't. This is not a Sunday school. After that, I think I can say good night. As you please. Well, I'm sorry I was offensive. Good night. Oh, well, the tongue is an unruly member, is it not? Yes. Yes. I was tempted. I was tempted, but I did not fall. I did not fall. The thing's safe. I swear it. When you told me you'd come back from the grave, how could I believe you? I never knew such things could be. What's the matter with you? 
Look as if you'd seen a ghost. I have. I saw Morland as plainly as I see you. I'm going to mix myself a drink. Betty, just a minute. Well? I have an idea they're trying to scare us out of this house. There's no use blinding ourselves to the fact. There must be something pretty big at stake. Something that depends on getting rid of us? That's how it looks to me. Well, what are we going to do? Betty, I'm going down to that tomb and find out well, whether it's the only way we've got of finding out what's going on around here. Well, I don't want to be left here alone. Can I come too? There's nothing wrong with your nerve. Come on. Yours? Yes. I'll keep an eye on Browton. Well, I think you've every chance of seeing things if you lower scotch at that pace.
Wait. I'll come down. What do you want? There was somebody in the library. Who? I don't know. The door. It's shut. It's shut. Don't I... scream. Oh, that's what I need. The command in your wonderful voice. Come with me. I think you've gone far enough with your insinuations. Yes, and I may go a great deal farther. What is it? What's the matter? I've seen him. Now perhaps you believe what I told you. Get me a glass of water quickly, will you? Rotten, see if you can find Miss Caney, will you? It's wonderful to be with a man who isn't afraid. I am afraid. You, who have ridden barebacked over the desert. If you don't stop chattering, I'm afraid I shall have a knife in my back. But when I'm with you, I have to talk. It comes like poetry. Are you prepared to obey me? In anything. Then close your eyes and don't speak for ten seconds. panic sometimes. I felt his hands on me. That's why I know it was no ghost. It was no ghost. Look at the clock. It's nearing the hour. I know where you'll find him now. He's gone back to the tomb, to his heathen gods. And you and I will follow in there. Wait a minute. What's his doctor's telephone number? Yuxford, 7-2. I'll go no nearer. I'll go no nearer. I can see a shadow moving. 
I go no nearer. Well, then, go back. What about it, Betty? Do we go on? Yes, of course. Thought you'd say that. So you're not a parson, just a dirty crook. You'd better get out of my way. Your hand, eh? So that's how it was done. I wouldn't come any nearer. I don't have to. Look, if you please. Thank you. Come on now. When I phoned the doctor, I told him to bring the police. They ought to find us somehow. Well, even if they do come, how can they break down that door? They'll find a way.
The doctor in charge didn't understand the case. I'm afraid of catalepsy. Bleeding? Paulant was buried alive. Oh, Mr. Dragore, what were those shots? Out of my way. Where are the others? Leave me alone! Ah! Oh. I rather thought you might be leaving in a hurry with something in your pocket that doesn't belong to you. Hand it over. You win. That woman! There she is! Come now. Oh, you put up your gun, you fool! I tell you, she's got it! Come on, then! Now, Miss Kenny, if you please. I don't think so. You fool! If either of you two horrible men so much as move, in it goes. But you don't know the value of that jewel. I don't care for the value, it'll go. And if you shoot, I'll go with it. I mean it. Down 30 feet. And about 60 feet of water. And 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 then Australia. I can't see to tie this. That light seems much lower. No good, you can't breathe in there. The cartridge! It's here. If only. If only. I've had enough of this, Miss Kenny. Supposing I'm ready to shoot and take the risk. You'd be taking a bigger risk than you think. I'll take that gun, thank you. Now look here. That'll do. Now, what's the trouble? This. They're after it. All of them. It belongs. I'll carry her to the house. 